Hello and welcome to Dundon Links. We're up in Scotland on the Ayrshire coastline for the 2022 Trilby Tour Grand Final. The revamped Trilby Tour has seen a number of changes from previous years. The playoff has gone and the introduction of female competitors has been a popular one. Over the past few months, championships of Oxfordshire, Cumbria, Yorkshire and Ayrshire have produced qualifiers for this, the Grand Final at Dundonald. Across those events, competitors young and not so young, with handicaps across the range, have battled it out to get here with the top ten men and top five women from each event teeing it up in the Grand Final. Well, I'm joined by Ryan Rastel, who's been at all the events so far. Ryan, it's a blustery day here at Dundonald. Hopefully the rain will stay away. But tell me what you've made of the events so far this season in the Trilby Tour. It's been great to travel pretty much the length and breadth of uh, England and Scotland um, to see all the different resorts that we've had, the Trilby Tour. Um, at. They've, they've worked so hard to get the, the course is in immaculate condition. We can see here the weather's not been great, but the course is amazing. And, you know, that's happened at every single event that we've been at. It also adds to the sort of feel for the players. We've got the boards around the backs of the tees. We've got all the advertising out there. That first tee shot is a very, very nervy occasion for anybody. But certainly in these conditions, it's made even more so. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. A tough day for golf. Now, also with the Trilby Tour, it's mixed now. Grand final, we've got 60 competitors, 40 men, uh, 20 women. How great is that to see it's fantastic i mean it's it's added to and amplified this event massively all, all the qualifiers that we've been at all the championships we've we've been to so far the ladies have, have really embraced it the men have loved it as well mixing the groups up has been fantastic and i think it just adds to the quality of the event on the eve of the final the competitors had the chance to relax in the clubhouse and compare notes on the course being from the west of scotland I'm probably hoping that maybe has a wee bit of rain and a wee bit of wind. It might help me and the, the Scottish boys to play here if we've played here before. But yeah, I love the course, I love the, the venue. The, 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 this place is just magnificent. It's a really good atmosphere. Like Everybody's very friendly. I've seen people that I met at the Springs and we've talked about how they went today. Um, we've been through the book just to see what went well, what didn't go very well. Um, but it's a really lovely atmosphere. It's mad to be fair. I mean, I've been practicing for the past few months now, getting handicapped down and just getting used to terrain, like in the winds and stuff. And I've been so excited. I mean, I barely slept last night just for the practice round. So I wonder what it'll be like tonight. I can't wait. It's been a long time coming. It's felt like I've kind of prepared for, you know, months since the uh, the Cumbria Championship, and uh, just absolutely thrilled to bits to be here. Yeah. Now, Ryan, we both know the course here at Dundon Links. Clearly, the wind is going to be a factor today, but what about the challenges? What are some of the challenges of this particular layout? Well, they've been pretty generous, I think, with where they've put the, the tees, really. It's not playing its longest, but the challenges are going to be the greens. They're massive and really, really undulating. So I don't think tee to green is going to be particularly tough for the players, although the wind, as we can hear and feel, is whipping <laughs> up and it may rain a little bit. I think it's all going to be done on the greens. Like I say, they're so undulating and so challenging that if you're not putting well, you're probably going to have a bit of a nightmare around here today, I think. Uh, it will be tough. Now, you're going to have a look at some of the keyholes uh, later on in the programme. But first of all, let's get out to the action uh, with your commentator, Kit Alexander. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2022 Trilby Golf Tour Final here at Dundonald Links. Thank you, Sarah and Ryan. A big day ahead for all the competitors. And as we've heard, windy conditions greeted the first three ball as they got their rounds underway. Jumpers and bobble hats, very much the order of the day. Jordan Roberts made a fast start with two three-pointers and three two-pointers including a gross eagle on five. The five handicappers tee shot on six set up another par and he was one under par with 14 points. Ryan Estabrooks won the men's event at Kilnick Percy and he had this for birdie at the opening hole of the grand final. He settled for par but never quite got going with 12 points on the front nine. Fourteen handicap Andrew Tate had an eventful first five holes that included a three-pointer and a blob. 
He fired this excellent tee shot close at the sixth. He would make the birdie four three points, and that would take him to 11 points overall. Norman Kane scored a solid 16 points on the front nine and built some momentum after the turn. Pars at 10, 11 and 12, then missed 15 foot attempts for birdie on 13. The par enough for another three points for the West Malling member. Andrew Corson was one under his handicap on the way out, but he only scored four points on the next three holes. A par here with a shot on the 13th got him back on track. It's Andrew Corson and Norman Kane who are setting the early pace, both at level par for their handicaps through 13 holes. Jordan Roberts is a couple under his handicap at the turn. Now, Paul Brooks, been a slow start for him, but to get a ball hole this sixth short par three, as you can see, wind whipping off the golfer's right. Oh, that's an absolute stunner. And getting a bit of spin on it downwind as well. So some trouble for Norman Kane here. Oh, he's got it out pretty well. Just hang on. Oh, he's got a bit lucky there. Could so easily have found the bunker. Martin Crichton's had to take a drop, so now playing his third. It's an excellent looking technique, though. Keep going. Well, he'll have that to save his bogey. Well, this is an absolute roller coaster for Neil Murray up over the hump, and look how far right he's aiming. That's beautifully judged, though. Now, Michael Young, oh, that's scuttled up, that's got some pace. Sit down, sit down. I think it's just going to hang on to the green. Now, Crichton with that bogey putt. And in it goes. That's a really good four after finding the burn off the tee. That takes him to 11 points. Now Norman Kane got that bit of fortune with the ball not going into the bunker. Allows him to take putter here. always a little bit on the low side and light for pace. As we heard Ryan say earlier, these greens, massive complexes, really tricky to lag it dead. Paul Brooks for his birdie after getting the ball to dance on the green with his tee shot. Oh, well, the tee shot deserved more. But he is safely in for the three. Yeah, now, well, Michael Young. It is a birdie effort, though. He would have hoped to have been closer from green side in two. Nice roll. That's enough for his par, and he moves to 27 points through 14, so just one over his handicap. John McGregor back on the sixth tee now. So what's the winner at the Springs Resort got here? Go on. Great clubbing, but he will have to deal with that little hump about halfway along the putt's journey. Andrew Corson for Eagle. Well, the leader has a chance to really stamp his authority on this now. That will guarantee the birdie. So another three points added to the total, and he moves to 29 points, setting the pace 
in the first group out this morning. Oh, Thomas Tab, it's been a bit of a sticky start for him. Oh, that's sensational. Go in. Really good recovery out of that bunker there at the front. And I think we can give him that one for the part. Norman Kane hoping to slot this one home from about four feet. And he does. So he's hanging on to the coattails of Corson at 28 points. McGregor's birdie putt on its way. And in the front door. Well, he needed something special. It had been a slow start. Is that what kickstarts the round for John McGregor? Corson has edged into the solo lead, but Roberts is looking dangerous. And Mark Miller and James Penny are going well as they head into the back nine. Hello and welcome back to the Trilby Tour Grand Final. Designed by Kyle Phillips, Dundonald Lynx has previously hosted the DP World Tour and the Ladies European Tour, so has real pedigree. In addition to that, final qualifying for the Open Championship will be held at Dundonald Lynx from 2023 until 2026. Whilst the original Dundonald Lynx layout was designed in 1911, the recent developments of accommodation and clubhouse make Dundonald Lynx the perfect blend of old and new. Now let's get back to the action. Here's Kit. Two handicapper Dan Fry had a horror start with only one point from the first three holes. But he fought back strongly and this birdie two at the sixth helped him accrue 14 points after nine holes. Paul Brooks blobbed the first hole, but he had four two-pointers in the next five and made the fifth net par of the day with this excellent putt at the seventh. <laughs> Carl Richardson got himself to eight points with a par three at six following this delightful chip. The Hickleton Golf Club member would finish the front nine strongly with three pointers on eight and nine. Fairmont St Andrews member Leslie Boswell enjoyed a solid front nine of 16 points. This quality tee shot set up a good par for two points. Ladies winner at Karis Green, Zoe Wilson, has only been playing golf for two years. She was two over her handicap after five and had to settle for one point on six with that missed par effort. Early leader Andrew Corson found himself in a bit of trouble on 15. He played this excellent recovery to escape with one point. He did add another two points to his tally on 16. That keeps Corson one point ahead on 32, but the top three all have a good chance to post the leading score in the clubhouse. Martin Crichton is three under his handicap through 11. And here is Corson on the penultimate hole. He's short in two, so this is third, looking to get up and down for par. He's made a very good job of that. He'll have about six feet left. Now, Margaret Shepherd, the golf manager at Karras Green. She's been playing golf for 15 years. Oh, and that was right at it. Only needed a little bit more. It might have been an ace for the lady who was inspired by her dad, a 10-time club champion. Michael Young, long effort for birdie and downwind as well. Doesn't want to get too frisky with this one. That's pretty well judged all in all. Oh, Freya Russell, scratch player. Part of the Stephen Gallagher Foundation. And you can see the skills there. Take a little bit of turn. Ooh. It's just released a touch on her. But this will be a great experience for her. And it's brilliant to see the ladies and the men all playing together. The first time in Trilby Tour history this season. 
Gail Hill putting for birdie up over the hump here on six. She got here to the grand final by winning the ladies section at the Springs Resort earlier this summer. Oh, Norman Kane. That's his fifth shot. So it's been a bit of a nightmare for him on this penultimate hole. Now oh, Russell, can she roll this one in for her par? Not to be. So that will be at best one point for the youngster. Shepherd for her birdie after that brilliant tee shot. Oh, heartbreaking. It's a solid three, but nothing more frustrating than leaving a good birdie look like that short. She does move to eight points. Michael Young for par on 17. With the wind really tugging at the trousers, that's enough to affect these putts. And he never quite got it rolling at the hole with enough conviction. It'll tap in for the bogey five, enough for two points. Keeps him in with a shout. Freya Russell. The one point. Yeah, well done. So the wind is getting up. So these later starters, perhaps having slightly tougher conditions than some of the people that got holes in early. Corson for par, the leader. And that keeps him in the lead and extends it. That's a shot hole. Three points for him. 35 points with one hole to go. Gail Hill leaving the flag stick in just to tidy up for her part. Yeah, good stuff from the 16 handicapper. A little fist pump there as well. Mark it down on the watch. Now Norman Kane. This is for a point, though. It's a double bogey putt. And he rolls it in. So important to keep the blobs off the card, even if you've had a bad hole. Make sure you get out of there with a point. Corson now has a three-point advantage with one hole to play. Jordan Roberts only four points back with four to play. Let's take a look at that 18th with Ryan. The 18th hole here at Dundonald Links is a long par five. It's going to be downwind today, though, so some of the players may have a chance of going for this green in two. The sensible shot is the layup here, just short, but you've got to be careful not to run into the burn because the third shot is still a difficult one. The green is very long and very narrow. We've got a bunker down the left and the burn down the right-hand side there, and many of the players today will be delighted to walk off with the par. This is Andrew Corson's second. He's got an iron in hand. I know it's downwind, but surely it must be a layup. Oh, and he's over on the right hand side. I think he was having a shy at the green. That's left a difficult recovery, though. Craig Boswell. Third shot, little chip coming up that slope. And I think he was looking just to bounce it over. It killed it into the bank. Roberts, the big danger for Corson at the moment. They judge that nicely down the tier. It's a bogey. And it just keeps things ticking over to 32 points. Time on his side, though. Craig 
Craig Boswell, after coming up short with the chip shot, has this to save the par. Oh, brilliant putt. Never looked anywhere else, did it? So he's on 13 points. He'll have to do something pretty spectacular to get himself into contention, though, the west of the way round. Matt Holbrook pitching back into the breeze. Oh! Brilliant effort. Young, he has laid up. This the third shot into 18. It's nicely played, but you can just see how tough it's going to be to stop shots coming in downwind there, even with a short iron or a wedge in your hand. Roberts, third shot on 16. Just finding himself out of position a little bit in these latter holes. Oh, a rush of blood there. Just needs to settle himself down a little bit. Norman Kane with the massive gorse bush behind him getting chucked around in the wind. Oh, keep rolling out. Well, not quite the right line, but the length was pretty good. And I think if you're going to lay up on 18 today, Going out to the left and leaving yourself that long pitch up the length of the green is the way to do it. Big moment for Jordan Roberts now. Par, putt on 16. And he was up and out of it very quickly. So back to back bogeys. 34 points, making his job over the last couple of holes a little bit tougher. But so much depends on what this man does right now. If he can get up and down from here, that would be worth four points to him. A shot hole. And he's done about as well as he could have done with that. So it will be... Well, that was about 12 feet. Oh, no. Well, it was a delicious pitch shot in for Holbrook. But it's just a bogey. But it's two points on the stroke index one. Norman Kane's birdie putt on its way at 18 for 36 points. Just dives under the hole. That'll be a closing par to get to 35 points for the man who's been playing for 14 years taking up the game seriously after managing Hastings United FC Michael Young for his birdie oh also just misses on the low side and he will join his playing partner on 35 points wife Deborah was on the bag doing a great job and what a three ball it's been that's Andrew Corson's wife and family watching on He's got this for birdie and four points to post a clubhouse target of 39. Oh, he's drained it. Walks it in and a fist pump. What a moment for Andrew Corson. A birdie on 18 at Dundonald Links. Oh, and the kids come running onto the green. And this is what the Trilby Tour is all about. These kind of moments for handicapped golfers. Getting to live the dream of being a tour pro just for a day or two. And I can guarantee he will always remember those celebrations on that 18th green, whatever happens now. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That brilliant birdie from Corson on 18 has him sitting pretty at the top on 39 points, but he'll have an anxious wait to see if Roberts or Crichton or anyone else can catch him. It's shaping up to be a dramatic finish at a breezy Dundonald Lynx. Welcome back to the Trilby Tour Grand Final. 
I've just popped out here onto the golf course. It's windy still, but no rain right now, which is fantastic. But what I've really noticed out here on the Trilby Tour is it's just the camaraderie. Great friendships developed last night at the grand final dinner. A lot of players with their family and relations and the atmosphere is just superb. 16-year-old Harry Mukherjee didn't have his best stuff in the early part of his first ever Lynx round, but he finished well with 11 points from his last five holes, including a par for three on 18. Su King made a gross birdie for four points on the second hole, and another highlight came here at the 11th, as this fantastic tee shot stopped on a sixpence and set up a two-putt par. Martin Kirkbride got his first net birdie of the day on 10, and the 18 handicapper added another two points on 11 for holding this superb putt. Well worth the fist pump. Jordan Roberts needs to pick up five points on his final two holes to tie Andrew Corson at the top. Martin Crichton is well positioned with five to play. Here's Ryan on the signature hole. The 11th hole here at Dundonald Lynx is a tricky wee par three. Club selection is absolutely crucial. You can see the three bunkers short of the green and quite a sharp downslope there. But if you're remotely long of this green, you can see the downslope takes you down where I am here, the dreaded cauldron bunker. One of the original features of the golf course here at Dundonald. And let me tell you, from my own experience, it's nearly impossible to get it up and down from here. Well, Thomas Tabb has somehow avoided the cauldron bunker, but he's got himself up the bank in the rough behind it. Gouging that one out. Wow, that's Seviesque recovery from there. Sit down, I'll stay on the green. Just trickles onto the fringe, but pretty good with not many options. Jordan Roberts with his approach to 17, not a shot hole for him. The 18th will be, but he'll be looking to get this one close. Well, it just drifted away on the breeze. Holds on to the edge of the green though, tab. Well, this would be an unbelievable par from where he was. Oh, you can see gesturing for the break he expected. But I think if you'd have given him a four when he was walking up to the green to see where his ball was over the back there near the cauldron bunker, he would have absolutely snapped your hand off. Manages to save the single point and move to 11. Andrew Taylor out of position on 17. That's well played, though. Uh, helicopters coming over. Everyone wants to see a piece of the action today at Dundonald Lynx. And with that going on overhead, Jordan Roberts has this for birdie on 17. Oh, now settle. Well, he had to give it a go. You've got to admire him for that. But he's piled the pressure on the par putt coming back. Neil Black on the 11th, playing 118 yards today. Yeah, pretty good shot from the three handicapper. Taylor for par at 17. Jordan Roberts will be watching this closely as well. That stayed just right, so it's a dropped shot for him. 30 points is the total. What did Jordan Roberts learn from that putt on a very similar line? He learnt a lot. Pops it home confidently. He moves to 36 points. That's three behind Corson. Confirmation of how things stand with the five handicap Roberts hoping to take advantage of the 18th as we know playing downwind and getting a shot there. But he's been in a bit of trouble and he's playing his third shot in from a long way back. But he does know a birdie would take him to 40 points. It 
It's a good approach, but downwind, you've got to land it short and let it release up. Leslie Boswell, his second on the par 3, 11th. That one's just released past the hole. It'll be a little bit quick coming back down there. Mark Billington. He played that really well. Had to use loft to get it to stop anywhere near the hole. Jordan Roberts. Four birdie for four points and to take the outright lead. Putting back into the wind. Oh, and he gave it enough pace. It just burnt the right edge. It was a terrific effort. But he taps in for the par, three points, and he joins Corson on 39 in the clubhouse. Neil Black, having found the putting surface on 11 for his birdie. Oh, rolls it in, putter in the air. Fantastic two for the three handicapper. Playing alongside him, Leslie Boswell, hoping to get out of dodge with a par. Oh, and he does. They're going in from all angles on this 11th green. So that's another two points for his tally, and he moves to 21. Now to complete the set of one putts from this group on 11. Ah, oh, brilliant stuff. Billington rolls it in for the par save as well. And he's on 18. Matt Holbrook. Got this to close out with a par. Ooh. So just a bogey for him. But it is a shot hole, so an extra two points to take his total in the grand final to 28. Shake of the hand for Jordan Roberts and Andrew Taylor. Well, I think he was after that bogey putt before it left the blade. He shoots 31 points. But that man on the right of your picture, Jordan Roberts, with a great round of 39 points. A hug for the caddy. Thoroughly well deserved for the pair of them. A bit of whiskey sounds like a good idea. Roberts has tied Corson, but it's Corson who would have the advantage if no one surpasses them on countback with 20 points on the back nine. Roberts fancied a whiskey, and Sarah and Ryan have headed for a drink as well. We are here at the Bothy. We all love a halfway house, but particularly good on a Dreek day like today. You can have something warm or... Something a little bit stronger. <laughs> we'll be back with plenty more action after the break. Welcome back to the thrilling conclusion of the Trilby Tour Grand Final at Dundonald Lynx. Lindsay Essie followed her first three-pointer on the 10th with another one at the very next hole, courtesy of this tee shot and a couple of solid putts. The 22 handicapper also made a two on the 15th. It's been a tough day for Thomas Tabb, but here he is finishing off nicely on the final hole where the Trust Golf Women's Open champion will be crowned next July. What a treat for all the players to emulate the pros this week. Paul Milet won at Dundonald Lynx in August. A cracking tee shot here on 11. But he had to settle for par after missing that putt. But he did move to 21 points with seven to play. Nine handicapper Craig Boswell ensured a good finish with this fifth three-point haul of the day at the closing hole. The birdie effort didn't drop, but it was an excellent finish for 37 points. Kevin Thompson has picked up another seven in his last three holes, and he'll take the title if he can play the final two holes to handicap. Unfortunately, Martin Crichton finished with two blobs. 
Donald Link sits on a magnificent piece of golfing terrain and Ryan's been looking at the 13th. Welcome to the 13th tee here at Dundonald Links, where three golf courses converge pretty much just next to this tee. We've got Kilbarnock Barassi over the other side there and Western Gales Golf Club over the other side of the train tracks. This par four is a pretty tough one for our players today with the train tracks down the left, we've got the bunkers down the right and also this green on two very distinct different levels. And if you find the wrong level on this green, two putting will be very, very difficult. Lucky Robinson playing Lynx golf for the very first time. 17 points to her name so far. Oh, and she's just carried the burn at the front of the green by the skin of her teeth. Won't quite make it up onto the correct tier. On the green in two here, always good though. Eva Woodward playing her approach into the final hole. Oh, what a stroke of luck. It splashed up. And I think she thinks it's still in the burn. Back to 13 with Clark's approach. Well, we've seen one go in a burn and hop out. One just about carry it. Of course, you can land it short and hop it over as well. Sit down. Well, oh, that'll leave a tricky shot coming back. More than one way to stay out of the burns around Dundonald links. Now ahead again to 18 with Wendy Allen. Oh, she's released that very nicely up this long green. Just sit down a bit now. Yeah, she will have that for a six, though. Katie Alexander. Another good young female player in the grand final this week. Plays off plus four and shows us why there. Firing that one into the 13th, using a bit of the bank behind to spin it back. Now, this is where Woodward's ball ended up after a little trip to the burn and then hopping back out again. Oh, that one's come in a little bit fiery. Come on, come back. Well, I think that one hadn't finished its journey. Her and her granddad on the bag certainly looked happy with where it ended up. Sean Heslin. Oh, nearly got a piece of the flagstick on the way past. Well, this is that tricky shot that Alison Clark left herself from the back of 13. Oh, that's beautifully played by the eight handicapper. Just slid the club head under the ball. So she gives herself a chance to save par. Now, Kevin Thompson, he was in with a shout of winning, but he's had his struggles here up 17 and now has this long putt for bogey. Oh, and he's not done just yet. You can see the frustration. Sean Heslin taps in to move to 34 points. Oh, Lecky Robinson, who just about carried that burn at the front of the green, coming up a steep bank here. And she's judged the pace very nicely. 16-year-old Eva Woodward to finish with a par on 18. Oh, so unlucky. Got into golf through the Stephen Gallagher Foundation. She works as a mentor for the foundation now as well to encourage more juniors to get into golf. Brilliant stuff. And she records a score of 28 points today. Wonderful to share it with her granddad as well. Now, Wendy Allen for a bogey. Double shot hole for her, though, so it would be worth three points. 
And three points it is. Big fist pump. She gets to 31. Little bow for the cameras. Back to 17. And this for double bogey for Thompson. It would be a point to take him to 37. Oh, and that's heartbreaking. The 60-year-old who grew up playing Monifeith and Carnusti blob 17. Keeps him on 36, so there's still a sniff of a chance with one hole to go, but he'll have to put that disappointment out of his mind by the time he gets to the 18th tee. Katie Alexander for birdie for the plus four handicapper. Coming down the slope. Uh, very nicely judged. An extra three points, and she goes to 18 with five holes to play. Now, Alison Clark. Oh, never got it going. So, a bogey on 13. She moves to 21 points. Now Kevin Thompson has played his way up the 18th. This is his fourth shot, and it has to go in if he's going to win. Oh! Well, it was a bold effort. He had to go at it and give it a crack. And I think he knows. Lecky Robinson with two and a half, three feet for her par. Oh, well, just tried to take the break out of it with a bit of speed and lipped out off of the right edge. Sean Heslin, long effort. He's left himself the par on 18. Just see how much trouble the wind is causing. So hard to lag anything up dead. And Dean Taylor for par. He's got 26 points, the seven handicapper. He will have to settle for the bogey and move to 28 points. Kevin Thompson, well, he knows he can't win it now, but this for a par on 18. Oh, he's giving it a good old rattle again. It's what he did on 17. Knocked his first putt a long way past. He's not wasting any time. He does hold that one, though. So two points on the last for Kevin Thompson, but it's not quite enough to join the top pair at 39. And Sean Heslin putting for bogey in the foreground, and that's worth two points to him, and the Sligo man finishes on 36 points. The long, anxious wait is over for Andrew Corson as he's confirmed as the 2022 Trilby Tour Grand Final champion. Wendy Allen finished top of the ladies. Andrew received the trophy from Ashley Pheasant. Let's hear from our champion. I've got a lot to thank my family for, you know, it's, uh, I try not to get emotional now. Um, but yeah, it, it meant a lot for them to be here. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's, oh, sorry about that. I know, sorry, I do apologise. But, yeah, it, it was a big thing about it, you know. that They're always supportive. You know, I try to play as much golf as I can, and it helps. How proud are you, are you of your daddy? Very proud. He's been practising for this for years now, and I think he's done amazing. We're very proud of him. 
It's been a fantastic day here at Dundonald Links. Many congratulations to all our competitors and a big congratulations to our 2022 champion, Andrew Corson. If you're interested in taking part next year, you can do so, you can register on the website. But for myself and Ryan, we'll see you next year in 2023. Bye for now.